God is good. All the time. And all the time. Once again, this year, I am privileged to welcome new blood into our Mill Hill Society on behalf of the General Superior and the General Council. Nine young, energetic men taking their perpetual oath. It is an evening of commitment and engagement by our brothers with God and the church through our society. My dear friends, we live in a career-driven world where everyone seeks to climb the social the political and the material ladder. Very few search for the spiritual ladder for the sake of it. Service and positions in the church have also just become another social promotion at final vows or perpetual oath like this one today or at ordination like tomorrow, there is joy, there is happiness. People rejoice at the completion of a step in their calling towards priesthood or religious life. To some, it is a point of arrival. To others, the beginning of greater discernment as each person seeks fulfillment. This evening, we celebrate the perpetual oath of our brothers, Bruno Lecandon, Tamfu, Twenkam Twante, Frederic Botaka, Chamboli, Clement, Austin, and uh, Dennis. You have accepted to become Mill Hill missionaries. And we celebrate you committing yourselves today for life in the service of God through the Mill Hill missionaries. You commit yourselves to the life of loving service. This is a choice done by the individual, not forced. And that is why this journey is started, it's begun by many, but very few ended. In your class you were very many, but at the end of the day, only you are taking the perpetual oath. Is it because you are worthy more than others? Maybe not. This choice you have made is done out of free will and in obedience to God who calls us. At baptism, whether as kids or as adults, we chose to follow God and be part of his one big Christian family. Even if we were led by our parents, our parents, we confirmed this as we grew up. And we made choices to follow him closely. And today, that one is being confirmed as members of Mill Hill Society. We chose the Mill Hill way. 
And today we rejoice that you are confirming this by committing yourselves to loving service. It is a big step and we thank God for how far he has brought you guys. And your continuous search for a deeper relationship with him. Whenever we make a choice, dear friends, we try always to go for the better or for the best option. And there is a lot of sacrifice that goes with it in order for us to concentrate on the choice that we have made. We let go of others. When we choose the one God in whom we believe, we let go of all the other tiny gods around us. You know, in the African society, we used to worship gods under the tree, in the river, uh, in, in the rocks, and they would go and throw food to them at some point. But when we became Christians, we said, okay, to hell with those other gods. Now, we believe in those one God. And we seek his will only. And we seek that will all our lives. And when we chose Mill Hill, you know, when we sing the song, for he is a Mill Hill man, he would have been a Capuchin or Cistercian or what, what. When we chose Mill Hill, we let go of the others. And we follow where the society leads us in discovering the will of God in our lives. Sometimes we may falter, sometimes we may doubt. But we keep seeking and trusting that God will lead us. That's why when you were called, what did you say? Here I am, Lord. Send me. Just like the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 and Psalms 39. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. You, that is a response of a ready servant. Somebody who is ready to go out. In being missionaries, my dear friends, we are called first to be human. Human enough to love. Human enough to serve. Without that humanity, we might just be robots. Serving our own selves. Working for ourselves. For me, myself and I. And that is when our calling becomes just a career and a social step. Everything we do will be not for the benefit of the people we serve. But for us. Humanity brings us to love. And to pray. Our reading today. From the St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. In everything brethren. Put on love. That is the only thing. Humanity invites us to love. To pray. It brings us. To care. And to share. Sharing our life. Which is broken like Christ's. For others. Humanity leads us to seek the good of others. Before ourselves. Humanity is our mission. But with the heart and face of Christ. I dare ask you my dear friends. Do you have humanity enough? In you. Because we may actually be human. No, we may actually be human beings, but we are not human enough. Our call comes with a lot of humility. Remember Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. Although he was in the form of God, Jesus did not count equality, he humbled himself. Becoming human, being obedient, even unto death. So in accepting God's will, we do it selflessly. 
That's why at both the temporary and the perpetual oath, what do you first promise? Obedience. You do not even start with poverty or chastity. What do you promise? Because at the end of the day, are you even poor? Are we even chaste? We are just there. But we promise obedience. Because in obedience, everything flows. It is not by error that we promise obedience, mainly. Obedience is humility. In obedience, we become the little ones, allowing ourselves to be led by the Spirit of God. Where the Spirit leads us, we go. In obedience, we become keen listeners, like our patron, St. Joseph. We take the autumn mass of St. Joseph today. We do not just dream, but we pay attention and meditate on the message God gives us. Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to Egypt. That's the gospel we heard today. Matthew chapter 2 verse 13. Get up, take the child and his mother back to the land. Joseph did not question God. And neither did he only remain at the level of dreaming. Because he would have said, these are just dreams. He understood God was speaking. And he listened. We do not start arguments and questions even before we have taken the first step. And this is a challenge to our generation, my dear friends. To listen. To obey. And to follow. It's a big challenge for us today. And I always laugh sometimes that we begin formation as young people, always very holy, very humble, innocent, respectful, and prayerful fellows. But at the end of our formation and at ordination, yeah, we are more educated, but I don't know whether we are more formed or deformed. Because Sometimes we become more stubborn, a bit faithless, individualistic, prayerless, and sometimes even proud. And that's why you find people in mission sometimes, our actions in ministry can make people even wonder whether we are Christians. Not to talk of being priests or people who are dedicated to God in a particular way. And as they say, be careful how you live your life. You may be the only Bible some people will ever read. And that's why the life of witness is very important. How has formation formed us to be human? To be available. Because it so happens that along the way, when some of us feel we have arrived, we begin to question the same God who called us to follow him. And the same tenets of faith that we received when we accepted that call. In the same way, we begin to question the same society we committed ourselves to. We question the same guidelines that have formed us and have formed many in the past. So sometimes I ask, what could have changed? What has changed, brothers? So today, as we ask you, you I would like to repeat, what do you seek, brothers? What do you ask of God and of his church? That's the question we just asked you. And if we reflect on these questions, which you have just responded to this evening, we'll understand that we are not seeking something of our own. We are seeking something gratuitous. 
We are asking somebody to make us more of him and like him. We are seeking to be part of his salvific mission. Part of his life. Not our vision. So therefore, let the celebration of the perpetual oath and every time we do it, let it stop being just a ceremony. Let it be a moment of greater discernment to what we ask from God. And especially us, the million missionaries, through our society. Tomorrow, you will be ordained deacons. And hopefully, priests next year. And I'm sure some of you are already preparing beforehand. Some are planning how to negotiate or maybe argue with their sock reps and their parish priests how and where their ordination will be. Others are planning what kind of vestments we're going to get, the gifts or how much we'll make from our ordination ceremonies. Fair enough. Good. Everything works out well. But... Does it really matter where and how and when you are ordained? If you are ordained in a hut, does it really matter? What are you committing yourself to? And who will you be ordained for? What and whom are you looking for? That's the question we should all be answering. Are you seeking yourself? The position you are in? kind of elevated to or the life to serve after Christ. Who reminds us you did not choose me I chose you. John chapter 15 verse 16. And without me or apart from me you can do nothing. John chapter 15 verse 5. You are chosen, man. Gentlemen, you have been chosen. You have been called. So it's not your mission. And therefore, we must understand that we are only sharers in the life and mission of Christ. Sometimes, when we joke as military missionaries, we talk about some of our elders who have worked in a place, and when they are leaving, they say, Mission is close. Let's hand over. Is it your mission? What are you handing over? You know? Mission continues. And mission is everywhere. And pastoral is not limited to, to, to parish. or where. You are all on mission. Wherever you are placed. Be it a school. Be it information. Whatever village you are or town. Or ministry. You are on mission. And that is Christ's mission. Not ours. And he is that source of mission. So for us to be effective disciples and followers, we must love him. We must love humanity. We must listen in order to follow. And in listening, we surrender to him and his will. Alone, in truthful, simplistic obedience in that way, as we read from Gaudium et Spes, number one, reminds us that the joys, if we do so, the joys and hopes, the grief and anguish of the people of our time, especially the poor and the afflicted, in any way, should be and will always be the joys, the hope, the grief and anguish of the followers of Christ, you and me. So, as I round up, I therefore ask you, brothers, and I challenge you, and all of us, are you humble and obedient enough to take the perpetual oath? Don't say I'm bringing in new questions. <laughs> I'm just inviting us to reflect. Are you humble enough to be a servant? And do you have humanity enough in you to serve? 
Are you human enough to love? We pray for you, brothers, and for all of us information. May St. Joseph, our principal patron, who was obedient to God's will, who listened and worked quietly without alarm, lead us to total obedience and simplicity in our life of service. Amen.